Welcome to the Clubhouse. My name is Alice and I'm so glad you could join us. In the last couple of videos, we've been having some fun learning some bookmaking techniques. I've made so many little chapbooks now that I have presents for all my friends and family for the next year. So I guess they all know now. Surprise! Here's your handmade sketchbook. Whatever, they don't even know that we make these videos. Can you imagine what my brother Chuck would do if he knew I told y'all about his cheese trick? I mean, it was funny, but geez, the SPCA would never let him adopt another cat, that's for sure. Anyhow, back to the clubhouse. Every time I start working with the fancy paper cutter, double-sided tape, or the rubber cement, I get a little excited. These paper crafting tools are so much fun to experiment with. I was having myself a grand old time the other day making a giant mess of paper strips and confetti, and I noticed the shape of the envelope our electric bill came in. Something in this weird little brain of mine wouldn't let go of it, and I thought about combining two of them at the flaps to make dun -dun -dun, a goofy little trapper keeper. No, wait. I can't call it that. There's probably still a trademark on, those, on that. Y'all remember those? OMG, I loved my trapper. That's what the cool kids at my school call them, trappers. Mine wasn't actually a brand name trapper though. What do you think I am, a millionaire? Nope, I had a holder folder. I think it had a picture of a golf ball on it. Maybe it was some kind of Epic Epcot ripoff. I don't know, it was a white ball with dots on it. Anyway, I got to thinking about how excited I was to organize my trapper. All the pockets, one for loose leaf, one for construction paper, one for the notes that Rebecca Teal and I used to pass in social studies. Something about all those paper folders was so much fun to organize and personalize and then to dig through later for so many middle school prizes. Wouldn't it be fun, I thought, if I were to have a trapper now that I could use to organize my stamp collection? my seed catalog, or my collection of way too cool to ever actually stick on something stickers. Now the envelopes from the electric company, uh, no, not that electric company. The way more boring actual electric company were not very exciting, as you can see. So I dug into our flat files for something a little bit more colorful. Don't these colors look amazing together? I mean, dang, that's just downright fantastic. Well, if this looks like the most fun you can have without a jet ski, you're in for a treat, because I'm gonna teach you how to make your very own. You can even use those ugly water bill envelopes if you want, I won't judge. Well, here's what you're going to need. Envelopes, any sort, decorative paper, chipboard, cardstock, an X-Acto knife, rubber cement, double stick tape, a bone folder, a ruler or straight edge, pencil, and a glue stick. So, step one, we're using double stick tape to tape our envelopes together to create your page pockets. It helps when you start to lay them all in the same orientation. I also like to make sure that those flaps aren't already stuck together. Sometimes those old envelopes, they get a little damp and they stick together. So you see I'm laying them all flap up and in the same direction. That'll just make sure that when it's time for me to tape them together, even if I'm going quickly, I'll get them in the right order. So I'm making this blue one and I have a few already stuck together. I've got these two left to add. So we're going to apply the tape onto one on the outside of one of the flaps. And I've been making kind of a little rectangle along the whole edge, outlining that flap. You see the shiny of that tape? It goes around the whole outer edge of that flap. So I'm gonna take my next envelope with the flap up 
And it helps if you align the bottom of the envelope first, because once you stick to that double stick tape, it's hard to pull it up and realign it if you need it. So when you're confident of its placement, you're going to just give it a real nice, firm pat in place. So I'm going to do the next one. And again, I'm just taking my double stick tape and I'm going to draw oops, a rectangle outline along that flap of tape. And again, I'm aligning the bottom edge first, since there's no tape there, it gives me some time to really get it exactly where I want it. I'm going to firmly plop it down there, make sure it's nice and stuck. So now I have my pages are created. One side is the flapped and the other side is the pocket. You can use glue for this step if you want. Um, you don't have to use the tape. I just found that to be really easy. So now that we have our interior pages done, we're going to cut two identical pieces of chipboard. Now remember, you can find a lot of chipboard in your recycling. You want your two pieces of chipboard to be a quarter inch larger than your envelopes, both in the height and the width. So my envelopes are... We're going to cut that to five by six and three quarters. And I like to make a little note of that for myself on my paper. Because as they say, measure how many times? Cut how many times? Measure twice? Cut once. All right. So I don't think I've ever shown you the trick of using your fancy mat board if you happen to have one like this. You can, of course, use your pencil to mark your lines where your measurements are at the top and the bottom, and then use your ruler to align those two little hash marks and make a cut. But if you happen to have this cool little mat like I do, there's a really great shortcut. So my first cut is, five, I wanna make it five inches wide. So I'm gonna line the edge of my chipboard up square with the yellow line here on my mat board, and then I'm gonna count out five inches. I'm gonna lay my ruler so that it lines up with that yellow line at five inches. And then just cut. So this, is, this can be a lot quicker than individually measuring each and every one of those cuts. So I'm gonna do the same here Again, I'm going to line up, I like to line up a corner so that we're straight on two edges right against that yellow line. I'm going to count out those boxes. One, two, three, four, five inches. Put my ruler against that yellow line. And voila. I found with a chipboard, I usually have to go through twice sometimes three times to get it all the way through. If you're really struggling, it's time for a new X-Acto blade, y'all. So now we're gonna cut that height needs to be six and three quarters. So a little trickier when you get into the hash marks. So we're gonna count one, two, three, four, five, six, and then three quarters. And I'm gonna make sure that I line up with that three quarters at the top and the bottom. You wanna make sure that you're hitting both of those marks so you're not making a crooked line. There we go, all the way through that one. And don't worry y'all, I did pre-cut some of these pages. So again, six, three, four, five, six, and three quarters. All right. So we have two pieces of identical chipboard cut quarter inch larger than our envelopes. Um, now you're gonna wanna cut your fancy paper. I've already got mine cut to size. You want that to be the same size as your chipboard. And I've got two pieces of that. 
And then I like to cut one piece of a pretty uh, chipboard that we're also going to use in the cover. And then this final piece of chipboard is for my spine. Now it needs to be the same length as your pages, which if you'll recall is six and three quarters for me, and then three inches wide to make our spine. So let's go ahead and rubber cement those decorative pages together. So if you remember this from the last episode about bookmaking, key to the rubber cement is place, brushing it on, not too thick. We don't want it to be super goopy and puddled. And then we're going to let it dry. You can refer back to episode two in our bookmaking series for more about rubber cement. We're going to get right to those edges. That is the most important part. We don't want our paper to peel away at the edge of our book. Kind of making a little goopy mess, but that's okay because rubber cement, if you remember using it from grade school, is just going to come right off of that mat in fun, disgusting boogers. So we're going to wait for this to dry. It'll take a couple minutes. The time really depends on the kind of paper you're using. This chipboard dries pretty fast. I've also used the rubber cement on fabric and leather, and those can take longer to dry. Almost there. Oh, I hope we have enough left for this project. I have really been getting into the rubber cement. Not sniffing it though, y'all. Don't worry about me. So again, you'll see I'm working kind of quick in the middle. It's not as important, the coverage in the middle, as it is right up against those edges where you're Book might peel away. All right. So these are not quite dry. We really do want them a little drier. So we're going to skip ahead to the next step while we wait for that. I'm just going to get those out of the way. So I've cut a piece of cardstock to make my spine for my book. Now, if you don't have cardstock, again, I'm going to talk about the last episode we did about bookmaking. You can reference that for how to make a thinner paper, thicker paper out of thin papers that you might have. So this piece of cardstock is three inches wide. We're going to use our straight edge and a bone folder to score a line at one and a quarter inches from each side, which is going to leave us a half inch in the center for the spine. And then we're going to use our straight edge to crisply fold along that line. So again, I'm going to use my trick lining up my ruler on my mat. Getting that right at one and a quarter. Now I'm going to take my bone folder and I'm going to use the edge of it. There's a flat side and an edge side. I'm going to use that sharp edge side to draw a score. And then I'm going to pull it up towards the center. And now I have a beautiful crease. Should we look at that up close? Now I have a beautiful crease there for my spine. And I'm going to repeat that on this side the other side. So again, that score line needs to be an inch and a quarter in from your edge to leave us with a half inch center. So I'm scoring that and then I'm going to pull it up towards the center 
And now I have a really nice, although it's got a little rubber cement on it, but now I have a really nice crispy piece for my outer edges. And look at that, y'all, a little bit of patience and my covers are ready to stick together. So you only get one chance to get those in the right place because we're making a permanent bond with that rubber cement. You cannot pull it up and stick it back down. So you want to be mindful while you're doing it that you're lining up your corners. All right. So now I have my front and back cover are done. I've got my spine and my interior pages. So next we're going to glue our cover to the cardstock spine using these lines as a guide. So again, I'm going to grab my rubber cement and I'm going to paint that. I'm not going to, I'm going to try and not get it in the center of the spine. I just want it on those flaps. Oh, goopy there. Finally, I'm going to do a little bit along the edge of my book. And I found kind of a trick. Instead of drawing a line on my paper to try and glue to, I'm going to put my ruler so that it, it shows me an inch of that cover, and I'm going to put some glue there. I'm going to do it again on this guy. Again, I'm going to lay it down to mark off an inch. So we want that glue to dry up a little bit. It looks like it's close, y'all. So this was a little tricky. What we wanna do is make sure that our fun cover is facing the outside and that we're gluing as close to that score line as we can. That one is still a little wet. Let's see if I can't sop that up. Okay, so with my chipboard facing up, I'm going to very carefully, because again, you don't get to reposition this, and I'm going to slide that chipboard cover right into where that crease is on the spine. Well, it looks pretty good. Flip it over, I'm going to do the other side. I'm sticking the glue to the glue, and I'm aiming right for that crease line. So if you've messed this up a little bit, if it's not as straight and aligned as you would like all of those edges, you can come back at this point with your uh, straight edge and your X-Acto and you can give them a little trim because we did leave this a little bit wider than we needed. But I feel pretty happy with that. So now I am ready to put my pages, my envelope pages, into my book. So I'm going to start with the full envelope side and I'm going to grab my double stick tape again. And you want to use that tape on the envelope. It works better sticking to the envelope than it does to the cardstock. I feel like you get a better bond that way. All right, so this one, 
we're going to line up that edge of your envelope with the edge of your chipboard, remembering that there is about an eighth of an inch all the way around. And then I'm just going to lay that flat when I'm satisfied with its placement to give it a good push. Open it up and I can stick it from the inside as well. Turn it this way so you can see it. And now I'm going to do this last flap, which is going to attach to the back cover. So I'm going to tape that just like we were doing those interior pages. And again, you can do this with glue. It will take you a little bit longer, of course, than it does with the double stick tape. It's very speedy. Kind of why I like it. Quick, satisfying little project. And now this time, keep a little eye on it as we stick it together. Now what I did on my other book that I really liked was to put a piece of paper, um, a nice piece of colored cardstock on this side of the book to hide this envelope, like so. I'm not going to put you through the paces of watching me watch the glue dry again. So let's take a look at this book that I had finished. Because the last thing that you're going to want to do is to cover up all of these little places where the, there is um, gum adhesive on your envelope. We want to cover that. If your book gets damp, um, you could accidentally seal your pockets inside your book. No fun. So I'm just using a glue stick and I found some fun paper, some fun scrapbook paper that really looks like graph paper, which I think is going to be a good time. Good time, Charlie. I'm going to be able to write what is in each pocket here. So a bunch of different things for some fun. And if that isn't just the cutest, I don't even know. I get a silly kind of excited thinking about filling these up. I think this one is going to get filled with my plant pounding watercolor sheets. Or maybe toenail clippings. Ew, gross. Sorry, y'all. I didn't proofread this script after I asked for some help with the spell checking. Dang, we were doing so well, too. Well, as we like to say about this time, this is Alice signing off from our Summer Avenue Clubhouse. See you soon.